codebuddies.org live code hangout. Today we're going to be working with our sustainable urban design project. This is a live code hangout, it means um, it's not a tutorial, we're figuring things out as we go, making mistakes, uh, hopefully chatting with some stream participants. We've merged the previous changes in um, where we created a parameterized query uh, allowing people to actually uh, change the uh, radius around uh, points of interest and then define their own kind of spatial uh, constraints uh, for livability metrics. In other words, they want to, in this case, define how close people should be within um, proximity to grocery stores and, and uh, convenience stores. So that's all working in our experimental UI. And we're going to kind of re refactor the UI a little bit now to take advantage of um, view slots that'll let us compose different um, UI elements into a, a common interface. Uh, regardless of the navigation, it'll uh, look similar and, and um, essentially the query parameters will go into the to the slots. So let's go ahead and get our environment set up and we'll start to make more sense of that as we go. This is um, under Docker Compose. This will give us a Postgres MPG admin instance. And then if we go into our experimental notebooks folder and uh, start the dev server there. And pacing on my keyboard has been problematic. I don't know what it is. It's really weird. Okay, there we go. So what we've got is a, essentially a map that renders some data that comes to the uh, the Django server is not running, um, but we don't really need it to at this point in time. On the right hand side, we've got this inspector sidebar, and I'd like to move these form widgets over to the inspector. Uh, the reason I haven't done that already is the inspector is part of a base template that renders this uh, top and bottom bar and these sidebars for navigation and property inspection. Um, and then the child template is all rendered inside of this kind of uh, main template area. And the state uh, is managed through this template, the child template. I don't have a global state manager. And I'm not sure that we need it until we encounter I need I don't want to just operate under that assumption so when we change these properties they're actually changing the way the data behave on the map and I can I might as well just get that running if I split this here it's still using the wrong virtual environment Oh, there's a VS code. That's yeah, the problem. No, not really, actually. Not sure why VS code is activating the wrong virtual environment. Basically, we have the server running 
and it'll serve the data to the client and these points. Then we'll get geometric buffers around the points, but that layer, the first time I loaded it, it is not working as well. It's, um, in, in the other data layer, it disappears. I just don't understand. There's some kind of transient issue the first couple times I refresh. Um, the map layers blip in and out. But the point is, we've got these parameters that are changing uh, reactively the geometry that's uh, created. It's a derived geometry, a buffer, and uh, we, then we take the union of those buffers where they overlap. You can change the unit, stuff like that. And this specifically lets urban planners to say, hey, we want to define our own um, constraints, and we want, for example, all of the buildings we want to locate primarily between uh, within uh, you know four miles or four kilometers of a source of food or there's other properties and I just want to move these over to the inspector toolbar instead of having them in the map interface so today we're going to I'm going to be learning about view slots how to do those properly and uh, that'll be, let me compose this UI a little bit better cool so a little bit of weird stuff behavior getting the environment set up but now we're good to go so we'll go to this in the UI is it's not really an experiment anymore I, I should actually just move it it's really a client server app and in fact we might even split this out um, into different repositories Likewise, <coughs> we'll just move these notebooks, uh, these notebooks folders into the root. Those are some big changes. Fortunately, I don't have well. Fortunately and unfortunately, I don't have a lot of other, any other, many other, or any other collaborators at this point. Um, I'm not trying to diminish uh, the contributions we've received, but I'm the primary person writing the JavaScript and Python and, and, and whatnot at this point. So um, those uh, shouldn't shake the tree too much. Moving that, those things around. Okay, now we're gonna look at view slots. We'll open up our our clients. And it's divided. It's a Quasar app, so we're following the Quasar's scaffolding. But we're in the source folder. We have two main things we're interested in. Uh, there's a base template. There's a router view, and then within that we get an index page. Ah, the layout and the page are what we're after. So we got a main layout and an index page. Um, I'm not sure exactly if each of these will be a, uh, how to organize this to be honest. It seems like these should be links and they would take you to the corresponding, you know, so you could copy and paste it. It would change the URL and load the appropriate data and let you tweak the parameters of the data. I don't know. 
uh, any different at this point if or if we should have kind of a unified um, canvas and you just toggle the layers on and off with one inspector that has settings for all the layers for example so I'll just go with my first instinct which is to treat this as a navigation menu that will change the URL and load um, map layers and um, these parameter forms so to speak over here in the inspector to do that we'll need slots <coughs> new um, uh, view I'm new to uh, I don't know much about all this stuff but uh, it's really interesting to learn and so we've got in our main layout we're just rendering this page um, basically have navigation links. I'm just going to see how Quasar is built in view, but they might have some conventions to follow. Or scaffolding. Oh, yeah.
think if I Named slot here, I might be able to render something into it. So why did it get a compiler error? All right, it didn't work <laughs> quite. It worked, but it ran, it overrode the whole thing.
we'll get a router view name equals mm -hmm. I kind of hoping to do this within one component because I want to find that state. Mm, let me just see. This doesn't seem like it's going to work with the way this is architected because the navigation menu is outside the router view. And I, I can move it so it's in a layout with the router view. What happens if I do move the inspector into the router view, for example? It would be within the page container. Let me see. So I'll get rid of it. And maybe the inspector is not so super important. I can I can let go of it, having an inspector as well. Yeah, so we just uh, don't have anything over there. But if I move it into, and it's a little bit redundant, honestly, but. Can move it into this slot here, for example. But first, let me just see if it'll work by moving it into the template. Hmm. Oh, that makes sense. So I, I know that now. See so if there's one one child. I can put it, put them both in a div. But the, yeah, the uh, inspector is not going to work. The Q drawer has to be at the level, top level of the template, basically. The layout. With the other Q drawer.
Well, there you, I need to shift to a global state manager to share state. I think the slots approach is a natural one because I want to control. I want to specify which uh, form renders on the actual page that renders. So this is the page that's rendering here, and I literally just say these are the f fields that it, it's in the right context at this level and the slot mechanism or something similar sounds like the right way to go like this should go into that slot and then the view router doesn't quite work that way Hey, what's Imper Imperium? How you doing? <laughs> I'm reading the docs and not quite knowing how to work this out. Seems like I should be able to, in theory, render a form in a an element of a, like a layout. I do this in Django when you inherit from a template in Django you just uh, what's the syntax about uh, yeah you just kind of tell it what um, what blocks to override it it's kind of how I'm thinking of it So this would be like the body, the content or body block, and over here would be the inspector block, and I would insert my content in the inspector block. When we're doing a, a, a child page instance, and those are blocks are the equivalent of slots in view. And you can give them names. Fallback content, stuff like that. What you been up to, Imperium? Anything exciting going on? Fun stuff.
So we want multiple slots, and I don't want to define components in those because I want the um, I want them to share a state, and I don't want to resolve resort to a global state management layer, view X or whatever, if I don't have to. Uh, no, you don't have to learn computer science to get into web development at all. In fact, you can learn computer science by getting into web development. Learn it through applying uh, and, and building stuff. And web development is one of these, um, well, caveat emptor here, but uh, with starting with basic HTML and JavaScript and CSS is one of the smoother gateways into getting uh, interested in developing a knowledge in the realm of computer science. That said, just there are some very complicated ways that people are doing web development. So be careful whose Kool-Aid you're drinking. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you've got to drink some kind of fluids. <laughs> Eventually, I'm, I'm over here with beer. So it's, um, yeah. What are you interested in in making? Like, what draws you to computer science? What do you like about it? sense um, what are you good at now what do you like doing and by good I don't mean like professional or anything like any inflated idea just like what do you find yourself compelled to do and drawn to and you know able to make uh, you know, uh, achievements essentially like um, is it playing guitar songs or baking brownies? You know, those are all achievements that you can be good at a lot of different things, right? That's all I mean by that. Oh yeah. Okay, so yeah, it's about college decisions. Yeah. Yeah, so you're good at computers. That's a good start. But you don't have to be. You don't have to study computer scientists to be good at, uh, and to apply your computer knowledge. In fact, um, almost any domain, any academic or just uh, career domain is going to need computers, going to have an aspect. Of it. So you don't have to be like formally a computer scientist or majoring in computer science. What's your minor? What minor did you choose? And your minor is actually probably more important than your major. It'll tell, tell me more about your interests. And if you don't have a minor, I would advise you to minor in something and consider minoring in computer science and majoring in something not computer related at all. Something in the sciences or humanities or arts, any of it, uh, computer science, can be a good foundation and a complement like to to applying other aspects. You know, even mathematics, computer science is complementary to uh, you know, somebody studying math. There's gonna be a recipe here. I'm just not connecting the dots. Because I mean, computer science is not gonna really prepare you for just these weird arbitrary things that you encounter <laughs> in a lot of, when you try to, try to apply your knowledge. It, I think it'll give you a good uh, understanding of how algorithms work and how to 
optimize um, queries and you know <laughs> big O notation and things like that. Um, but honestly, I think a lot of what web developers do and uh, developers in general do is we don't have to like work necessarily at those levels of abstraction. We're hopefully building on tools that are already optimized unless you're building tools. Uh, well, I won't go as far as to say you don't need school, but I think what's more important is, one, it sounds like you're taking a gap year, which is uh, actually increasingly common in the United States, for example. And I think it's one of the better decisions people can make, uh, not to sort of like, just take a break, slow down a little bit, and uh, not to sort of tie yourself into one uh, discipline uh, straight out of high school or whatever, because you, know, you don't, and people my age, I'm 40, pretty much. Uh, we still don't know what we want to be when we grow up. Uh, I don't think we should have to commit. And I don't think uh, also that education should be um, so rigidly subdivided into like, you now you're studying math, now you're studying computer science, now you're studying biology. And increasingly, I think, um, for example, in Finland here, here they're I uh, forget that there's a phrase for it, but they're actually combining, it's like a discipline-based uh, learning or something like that. Um, but rather than studying now math and now science, they're saying here's a problem that people are challenge, challenged by or a domain where we're getting knowledge, gaining knowledge. And here are these tools, mathematics and science and uh, sociology and things like that. These, are, these can be applied in this problem domain. I think that's a really good approach. So what it comes back down to, though, is where do you want to apply yourself? What, what do you want to... What do you want to improve about the world? What... When you look at something, you, what problems do you see that stand out to you that you would really w want to help, help fix? called again. Yeah, that's a good start. You don't need a computer science degree for that, for making websites. Have you made any websites? Do you have a portfolio that you're working on? What is it called again? A router view? Or is it below that? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, router view. So I'm thinking I can put slots inside of this router view tag if I do something like this. The problem is, I would just have to move my whole. Hmm. I think the whole layout, almost everything inside the layout, would have to be moved into my router view. Because as far as I can tell, these Q drawers need to be children. Page container might have to be <laughs> child of a layout. This is really confusing. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. I also started that way, kind of just paging through books and stuff, and um, 
taking notes and getting an understanding of it, that certainly helps. But you you got to apply, you got to balance that. And if not balance, it's got to be probably more applied than theoretical. Uh, in other words, uh, not just reading about playing the drums or playing the piano, but playing the drums or playing the piano. And then reading about that as well. 80-20. So you need to, most of your time, be writing things, websites. Be doing the thing that you want to do. And in the process of doing, you're going to be reading a lot. As you can tell, half the time, if not most of the time, I'm on these live streams is probably kind of boring, admittedly. But I'm reading. My stream manager. Hey, what's up, Rich? How are you doing? Imperium and I are just talking about kind of uh, kind of how to learn and how to uh, learn about computer science and what what are some good like Rich, what got you into uh, to like computer science and networking and stuff like that? What was your kind of learning journey in general? I Imperium is interested right now in, in doing um, web development and probably learning, or whether you need a computer science degree to do web development or or whether web development might be a path to open up knowledge and horizons in computer science. And I, I went through a similar path, uh, kind of full circle now. Um, I started as a kind of web developer doing, you know, WordPress, uh, um, Joomla, and Drupal sites, working with content management systems. Then I started working more and more with data, and then started programming. So learning SQL, JavaScript, Python, and now I'm back doing kind of web development and stuff here, but applying all that. So it's just like layers. And I don't know if I need to get bogged down in this. I can do a different task. Uh, I was hoping it would work. Um, if I can't figure it out though, then that's cool too. I could work on that. This should be feasible. I essentially, well, the thing is this index is not inheriting. It's not inheriting. So that's the difference between Django. Your templates inherit from a base class, and then you basically um, shadow properties of that base class, I guess. And this is actually injecting content into a slot, a router view, some kind of thing. I'm thinking about it from the wrong angle. Anyway, what else What else you been up to, Rich, and how uh, you got any any idea on, on Imperium's uh, question? Oh, good. A lot of big uh, feedback there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So it started with gaming, modding games. That's pretty cool.
I'm not even sure that the router is necessary here. Let me think. <laughs> Boy, this is really ad hoc. Uh, and it might be throwing out the baby with the bath water, but uh, Quasar might have given me too much to chew on with the default scaffolding. I mean, it makes sense that in a way each of these would be a, a separate route, but they're they kind of have so much in common. Not only the um, sidebars and whatnot, but the map, the whole thing. So if we don't use a router view, how would we, for example, keep track of which of these is selected? So these would all be links naturally. <clears throat> I want to use slots, just I really want to use slots. So what I could probably consider doing is moving all of this other stuff into a base layout and have only essentially my queue page container be a router view. And maybe the pages could inherit from a base layout. <laughs> yeah, so Imperium, it comes back down to you though, man. Uh, we're asking, I'm asking what is f yeah, calling you? Yeah to you know computers like where your interest comes from so you want to build sites that makes sense that's a, you that you already answered that you want to build kind of a small websites um, but small websites for what again it comes down to what are you doing this for small websites for companies small websites for a business you want to start a business you got to come up with a higher purpose i think it's important a higher, I just mean like a more meta level. Yeah, for for small businesses, like or your own small business, okay, like a consultancy business. Businesses here. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And uh, Imperium, are you in the United States? I I'm sorry if I can't remember, but um, there's actually a good way of getting some concrete experience, and this is the path I I literally took. Um, yeah. Um, let's just say, what state are you in? Just out of curiosity, if you don't mind. Otherwise, I'll just do a random state, but it's cool. New York. There's a ton of location, ton of opportunity there. Location, job function. design kind of
And this is the big meta that I'm talking about. Finding a, an area of society that you're interested in. Uh, not, uh, I think too much, too many people fall into the, mm, traps a strong word, but into the pattern of like doing technology because it's cool for technology's sake. And then eh, maybe I'll find somehow uh, a way to have a career just doing technology because it's fun and interesting. But if you can plug into something bigger, uh, I think it's going to be a lot more fulfilling in the long run. And when you get, if or when you get burnt out from doing tech stuff, because I think that's kind of inevitable to be honest, at some juncture, you'll just want to move on to a hot, like different layer of the societal cake. Uh, you'll be in a, you'll have a good experience in a particular industry of interest. So, in any case, uh, this idealist is literally how I started working uh, in the tech industry, and you can set up uh, email alerts uh, that match a set of criteria, and you can get internships and jobs. Right now, I'm in this, uh, the job search. Yeah, a freelancer and Upwork, I think, is going to drain you of uh, vitality, but okay. And plus, if you're in New York, your cost of living is going to be a lot higher than many of the Upwork freelancers uh, who are able to just, um, well, there's a range of bids, and uh, some people in, um, I, don't, I don't want to phrase this in a way that sounds like, uh, rude or offensive but definitely uh, freelancer marketplaces tend towards the lowest bidder and there's people who their not only their quote their lifestyle but the um, their place of uh, residence uh, the cost of living is dramatically lower than uh, these major cities in the united states and uh, you're going to be competing against the worldwide marketplace of, uh, of freelancers and i think it's going to be really challenging to get a livable wage uh, in a marketplace like Upwork or whatever. Yeah, so I don't mean to, uh, you know, be rude or uh, demeaning. Uh, I think it's just, got, I'm just trying to say there's different, the economics of these different locations, locations varies dramatically. Okay, cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you gotta have the skill. It's kind of carriage and horse situation, right? Cause you gotta, oh, or, yeah, yeah. Almost sometimes it's a, the employers want you to already have the skill and you need to gain it. But really, try, uh, and, and so if I can ask, are you doing this out of financial need right now? You uh, need a tech job to get by or uh, would you have uh, a way of um, supporting yourself financially while you develop these skills? Um, such as um, possible to do internship uh, or volunteering for some organizations. If, if you have that opportunity, you can get some real practical knowledge I did an internship um, eight years ago. I was two two years interning in California, and uh, it transformed my life. And uh, I had been interested in web development and things like that going into it, and it gave me some focus and a tra tra trajectory that actually has put me on the path uh, of my current employer, as well as this job, uh, this project, which I hope will become uh, uh, the next uh, horizon of sustainable urban and development. So this idealist is a, a network for not pro for profit organizations, that, and not for profit doesn't mean they don't need profit or don't need financial stability. That means they have a mission that supersedes profit motivations. The profit supports the mission, and without generating revenue, um, usually through fundraising. Um, anyway, the, the those those funds that they raise go towards a mission in the world of somehow improving or uh, fi you know, fixing something that they see a, a viable need, whether it's homelessness, clean energy, civil rights. Some of these are remote possible too. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, yeah, and you got to think about your time. Then, if you're going to work at a minimum wage job or in an industry that really fights uh, uh, against minimum wage, like the fast food industry and the restaurant industry, they they're actively like undermining people's ability to have a, like a livable wage. 
uh, in my opinion, in my experience, uh, then you're going to be really pressed to uh, personally develop and emerge into the person that you want to be, uh, which it sounds like a web developer or computer scientist. So yeah, you have to find, that's a really challenging one. I was, I was fortunate that in my internship I, I was able to get a stipend uh, and they had room and board included, so it was actually a, a physical. I, uh, I was pr physically present on the campus, and they had a. I had my own cabin, and uh, they had three meals a day, things like that. So that really just gave me the baseline. I needed to survive and thrive, uh, and self-actualize. Hmm. Yeah, but McDo oh, McDonald's or Burger King doesn't sound right. Hmm. Yeah, this is a challenging one. Who's Cody Co? I've not heard of that person. <laughs> they have paid internships. Here's some paid internships. Yeah, don't do, uh, sorry, but uh, I don't want to sound prospect, uh, or prescriptive or preachy, so, uh, but I do want to, like, you're asking these questions, so it's, I think you're seeking advice. Um, don't get yourself in a job that's gonna take, you know, eight, uh, 60 to 80% of your waking hours and not further you down the road you wanna go on if possible. So I know a lot of people, they have to take uh, you know, jobs as baristas and things like that to get through college. So the job is just keeping them above water. So financially they can pay rent and have food on the table. So that is furthering them down the road as well. Um, but if it's competing, you know, if you're not able to thrive academically or able to have time to do the personal development and web development in this case, uh, then that job is actually a barrier to your self-actualization. Some of these r internships, especially the paid ones, or even entry-level jobs on this idealist, for example, this is not a freelancer marketplace. This is a job you will work for months or probably years if, if you're uh, so inclined. Um, these will further your career. They'll potentially give you wages and also get you oriented towards a bigger goal in life, sort of like you could think of it as like getting a compass bearing a north you know facing towards something that is meaningful something you're personally magnetized towards and one other thing i'll say is if you're reading these job requirements and the uh, internship requirements and they seem lofty or asking too much don't be afraid to apply uh, even in professional uh, job postings, so to speak, like companies like my company where I work, you know, the <laughs> requirements are not only lofty in a lot of cases, sometimes they're impossible to meet by any like human. And so just take those with a grain of salt that they're oftentimes put together uh, by an HR person or somebody who might not know exactly what a common uh, candidate would look like and they're just doing their best to to summarize the job and the requirements all right cool well that's um, remember that um, just do what you want to do now and don't wait for some idealized future but become the person you want to be by doing that immediately. So if, if it's music and hip hop or rap that you're interested in, do that every day. If you want to do web development, do that every day. I need to refresh my Twitch stream. It's kind of looking funny.
just one second. There we go. It's looking better now. The chat reset. I did that. All right. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. I've already been hearing one hour just scratching my head. I did read in advance, and I thought it would be okay, but then I didn't read uh, and realize that I was using a router view. That threw me off. Yeah, mastery is a long path. If anything, you'll need to just start doing something in general. If these components share a state, then I'm gravy. I will make a component for this. Oh, no, that's the same problem. I have to just move everything into the router view and then into my... And how do I pass state into the components? So I'm either coming at this too hard from a Django perspective. Yeah, I think that's a really misguided sentiment and it's not unique to you and I don't mean that in any way to be personally insulting, but um, what comes to mind is that um, a lot of times pedagogy, like uh, mathematics or computer science, for example, will say that in order to do something, you have to do this, this, and this, and this, and this, and it ends up front-loading you with with dozens or hundreds of requirements and I uh, that typically could be also approached in an inverted manner if you just start doing what it is that's important you uncover the concepts you need at the appropriate time at the time that they're relevant rather than front-loading you with all these concepts that will uh, potentially be relevant in uh, a later time making sure you check all those boxes before you start doing something. Um, so for example, if you want to do hip hop, and that's your goal, start doing hip hop and make your own hip hop w website, a, a website for your own personal practice. Um, put a bio up there, embed some pictures, some media, make some sections and navigation. You can make this a static website or you can use a dynamic content management system and uh, that'll allow you to learn about data models and how to uh, structure a database table and get query uh, data out of the database and put data in the database. For example, if it's a dynamic blog and embed content from other media sources, you could embed your uh, recordings uh, from uh, SoundCloud or something like that. Uh, all of those tasks will not only further you towards a goal of personal self-actualization, to become a hip hop artist, but also will teach you hands on computer science and web development skills. And you can magnify those skills uh, each time you pass over them. Uh, start with a static website, even. Hugo. Yeah, it's uh, just applied learning. Find a way to learn what you want by applying yourself and, and uh, self-actualization. <laughs> I know this is a big word, uh, a big weird phrase. I'm not sure of a uh, different way of saying that. 
it's just being who you want to be now, like being that and knowing that you're, you're going to blossom. You're going to have layers like the lotus flower opening and you're going to start as a small blossom, but these layers are going to unfurl. You'll have dozens or hundreds of layers. As you open to the universe and radiate your unique... Yeah, manifesting. That's actually a lot... That's a cool, better way of putting it. Yeah, thanks. You're manifesting. Yeah, you're self-actualizing. You're manifesting your, your being into the universe. Mm -hmm. And that now sounds like a little bit like hocus pocus or some sort of wishy washiness, but uh, it really is. It's truly we're all manifesting and emerging is another way of putting it. We're emerging uh, into ourselves, into the world, into relationships. Um, yeah, life and reality is emerging, unfolding, unfurling. And the key thing that the universe asks of us is that we un emerge and unfurl in a way that is inspired that is like inspiring meaning like the breath of the universe is is an, it kind of inflating you is it is uh, expanding your being and your capabilities and your reach and your uh, impact and uh, activities yes and not that you're inflating into somebody else's uh, cookie cutter shape or or getting some kind of external validation necessarily on paper uh, unless that is part of your personal kind of path. Yeah, well you have to, in order to do those, you have to have free time and you have to have financial stability. And you have to do those, all of those, you have to do them, make a practice of it every day. So yeah, here, I don't know. It's for, oh, I already gave it. So. If I don't use a route, I'm gonna have a bunch of ifs, v ifs through this thing for each of these navigation things. So router is the dang way to do it. The router needs to render a layout. And that layout I need to be able to inherit from. So out of curiosity, just what happens if instead of having all this in the view, if, uh, the index view, if I just... Firstly, I can test it here. Can this be moved into the page container? If not, then we'll know.
then I have a template with slots. Now this can't be in the page though, can it? I tested that, the Q footer goes away. No, no, it's there. Footer can be here. Why can't the inspector? Hmm, let me try that inspector one more time. This is gonna be some ugly code, I think, at the end of the day. doesn't work. So it's got to be a drug trial like you draw, Q layout. Hmm. Mm hmm, that makes sense. Just make sure that what you do in the next, so it's like, this is your one chance, so to speak. Trying to paraphrase uh, Eminem here, but so this is your shot. Make sure it counts. Don't miss your chance to blow. What's another way I can express these? I just want to move them. That's really the goal here. I could get rid of this bar, this inspector bar altogether. I don't really care about it at this other day. I just don't want it to be so cludely kind of plopped just in one place. That's what I'm after, to be honest. Oh, okay, so what, what else do we have here? That the drawer is the ideal way because it pops in and out of the view, man. Hmm. Menu's almost what it will work. I need something that opens. Let's use put some deals in there. Something like flies out. Which is what these sidebars do. Damn it. These are drawers. It needs to set state parameters. And all of the state is really global. It doesn't matter to the other pages uh, what the um, 
Okay, let me read. Let me think here for a second. So the goal is to let people define usability parameters at a project level, and so these will be defined at a, uh, for the whole project. The thing is, I need to toggle the form fields uh, that are displayed in this uh, drawer based on the route. Now, I've already read the docs if that's possible. The route uh, view router has the thing. So I'll have to let go of slots. That's not going to work right now. But route components. This is what I'm able to do the sidebar. All right, cool, Imperium. Thanks for stopping in. It's been nice to talk with you. Good luck with your studies. And keep me abreast with what you're what you're up to as well. And by the way, um, I don't know if it's relevant, but yeah, uh, never mind. If you if you want to involve uh, get involved with some other musicians, there's a really cool way of uh, live jamming even with the social distancing happening. Uh, I, I don't know if there's a lot of there's singers and guitarists and whatnot, but uh, in any case. It's good that you start recording your music, and um, there's a really cool way of recording audio. It's really affordable, and in fact, right now it's free. Uh, so this Reaper Digital Audio Workstation uh, is uh, to help people with social distancing and would like to make their music in, those, in these times. They have this temporary license. All you do is you copy this to your clipboard. It expires though. Pretty soon, actually, it's at the end of the day, at the end of the uh, month. Um, so we're at the end of the window of opportunity here. But this is really cool, and there's a built-in plugin for this. Uh, it's really fully fledged, and it isn't that expensive. They might extend the uh, uh, the free uh, period too, but it's sixty dollars, which, um, as digital audio workstations go, is uh, really affordable, uh, really uh, cheap, uh, and it's very capable. And it has this built-in uh, thing called Ninjam which you kind of connect to live jam servers and then you could collaborate with musicians in real time. It's pretty fun. I do it every so often, but I haven't done it recently. So here's what we're gonna be doing now. So anyway, thanks for stopping by. So I could have a component for each form. This this would work. Mm. about here we're doing is constructing these routes and I have a path with one component and so since we need these named
to the default. Should work if I do this. Wait a minute. Main layout. Here. All right, so we got a child. This is trippy, but okay. Oh, I just gotta get used to it as well. So here I'll I'll change this. Components instead of a function. This is going to be a list. Oh, come on. And then default will be import. Now this should make. Is this an error, or does that work? No. Oh, 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 oh. It needs to be a dictionary. Let me double check. It's just this straight syntax error. So, yeah. It be a dictionary. Yep, for doodles. There we go. And then that. And yes, that makes sense. I do want to go on a little bit of a walk tonight. We're getting there. This is going to be a, this is a step in the right direction. I've got to look at how this. I think actually, if I move this up, sorry, I'm sorry, name. Let's just call name default. To be explicit, then if I put a router view.
I'll use global state. I just need to control the form per route, the rendering of the form. Here I come back. And this needs to then this was confusing me. Right, this is going to return. JavaScript very well either. All right, there we go. Getting getting closer though. Getting somewhere. 
So this inspector is still working, and essentially I can then create And again, I'm going to forget about the state. Right now, I'm going to have a global state. I'm going in that direction. Things are working essentially. going to create a component let's just call it food menu Let's just put a template there first, see if we can render these in there. Because it's going to break if I don't have that state working out. Uh, linking these two, it'll break, but that's okay. For now, I just want to get the template. I just want to. Let's see if I can, uh, I can close this map. Just grab the markup for these Q inputs. Uh, I don't know if I need a row. Just these Q input, Q select. Oh, but I will need to do, but that's okay. One top level component. And then I can import this. I'm not using it, I think. And let's put this on the uh, inspector refresh. This is that transient error, but yes, we do have something. Whew. Yeah, and then the 
the, we'll use the global state because essentially each project is going to have a, a global definition of all of these, all these parameters. And we can use this navigation to show, to control the, essentially the sidebar here. All right, so whoa, getting somewhere. This is annoying, but uh, I don't know if it's the, the data just take too long to come back from the server or what? Oh, this is getting called the first time it loads and there's no data available. I'll have to figure that one out, but let's just uh, kind of get to a closing closure and get some closure here, get to a stopping point. Slots wasn't the right way. Um, named routes. Hmm, that'd be cool. So we'll have a named route here, but slash boot. Let's give the name now and uh, I don't know if we would have a default or anything, but let's go ahead and give it that name. And let's fix that layout to the ins uh, inspector, the drawer. Good. Oops. Ah, I keep doing that. Hmm. 
Brian, I don't remember. Any items in the state? I'll have to put those in the component. Or what the? That's confusing. So why there's the padding here, margin? Uh, clean, looking good. And we'll get some data in the mix. Ah, so from our map view, we have some state. This will be tied into the global state, so I'll be importing the state manager. I just want to render this in there for now. We don't need any of these computed properties or the mounted call. Yeah, looks good. All right, that's good progress. <laughs> I was getting confused and frustrated. Yeah, it's par for the course. Oh, I got some tea left. Cool. It's not too late for a walk. Um, I like this a lot better. It's just looking nice. I'm not going to remove this yet, but it just makes sense. Uh, let's commit this, and I'll just take a cursory look. It's well, almost two hours. I should just kind of wrap things up and do a recap. Mm. I'll do a quick summary. It takes about 10 minutes, probably. <laughs> or 10 minutes over there. Let's see how fast I can explain these things. So we added a new router view. And then we mapped the default. Sections. All right, not too bad. All right, here we go. Welcome to the recap of today's CodeBuddies.org live code hangout. Today we've been learning how Quasar and Vue work. The goal or the issue here is to um, move the map configuration form from kind of this position that's uh, in line above the map where we were just getting things to work and letting people, letting the user override the map parameters. Wanted to move it into a more kind of natural or conventional location on the sidebar. This doesn't actually work yet. It's, it's just the, the code is there. The next step will be to share state between 
basically globally. We'll make a global state container as far as I can tell. Uh, it had some great uh, challenges and difficulty figuring out. Uh, basically this um, navigation drawer, this Quasar navigation drawer only renders at the top level of the of a layout and this um, everything else here is inside of a page. There's a few layers nested so I couldn't uh, render content inside of the inspector like as a slot or something like that which I was kind of thinking would be possible based on my experience with Django but I did figure out how to do things the Quasar way and let's take a look at how we do that now. So the first thing is, um, and this is actually just how Vue.js works as well, instead of using slots we're using what are called router views and there's uh, at first there was a one default router view in our project implicitly named default I just made that um, explicit here and that's what renders the main map page component which has all the logic for rendering the map and creating these buffers and that's what we're kind of wanting to split out a little bit instead of having our our selection and our input widget in this page component component we want to move that out um, so I was able to create another router view which is sort of like a slot and you can have these named router views where you can render components uh, and all you have to do is in your route specify the components as a dictionary and give the name of the slot and import the components the view components from their respective locations. In this case we're using a Quasar concept called pages which we might even just get rid of that whole notion at some point and then a component those in the project are in separate folders and I guess it sort of makes sense uh, on some level but it's a little bit of a learning curve not only to learn the view concepts but then the Quasar concepts on top of it I think it'll be fine in the long run so I defined this uh, components dictionary imported the components uh, our map component as we saw here uh, hasn't really changed but I did create a new food menu component which is just essentially those those selection options and then uh, a few data parameters to kind of keep track of the state we're binding that the next session will be to take a look at how to bind these um, to a global state um, store uh, I forget what it is in view the default uh, uh, in any case we'll learn about that and the where the way this fits into the whole project the software project is that the designer will be working or the design team will be working across these different uh, urban aspects and potentially will be defining parameters for food ac accessibility transportation network accessibility and uh, convenience health and well-being and safety and education all those parameters will be defined uh, more or less on the map interactively that's the goal here and they'll be kind of stored in a global context object and essentially that'll be persisted in the server on the server we have a, a, a new um, component of our data model called project and it represents a, a design project or an urban design um, analysis and potential intervention uh, to track towards a desired uh, state in the urban environment for example if you define that we would like 80% of the houses in Tampere, households in Tampere, to be within three kilometers of a food source, convenience store, supermarket, or just regular market, uh, then you could see, oh, okay, this whole area here in Uloyarvi might have some issues. Now, granted, there are convenience stores and grocery stores in Uloyarvi. This is a lack of data, but the, more, the thing we're, I'm trying to illustrate here is that it's an interactive way of defining goals. Um, for any given urban environment or any design project, whether it's a city or a, um, a district or potentially a whole states and countries, and um, save those to the server and, and maybe solicit feedback or collaborate, uh, track those metrics over time as the data get updated. You can you can track them. So they, that's our brief update. I'm trying to keep it relatively brief. Brief. Uh, this has mainly just been focusing on the user experience, and again, we'll be moving. Uh, these parameters into a global state where the, the user will instead of interacting with these widgets they will be over here 
Thank you very much for your time. This has been a Code Buddies Live Code Hangout. If you'd like to get involved with this project or similar projects, stop by codebuddies.org. Code Buddies is an open source project on GitHub. You can go by github.com slash codebuddies to get involved with the next generation of the Code Buddies community platform. Thanks a lot, and I hope you're doing well out there.